China just unveiled a piece of technology that's disrupting the entire tech world. But what's even more fascinating than the breakthrough itself is the timing of its release and what it signals about the future of U.S.-China relations. On January 20th, the very same day Donald Trump was sworn in as the 47th President of the United States, China released DeepSeek R1, an advanced AI reasoning model designed for deep data analysis that immediately rivals America's open AI. It took Google and OpenAI years and billions upon billions of dollars to build their latest large language models. But now, a Chinese research lab has built a competitive model in just two months, using downgraded GPUs, for less than, get this, six million dollars. Not billion, million. This is the biggest story emerging from China right now because it will fundamentally change the trajectory of technology around the world. But once again, I want you to focus on the timing of this announcement. Make no mistake, China deliberately waited to release this groundbreaking development on the morning of Donald Trump's inauguration to send a powerful signal to the U.S. government. Under the Biden administration, the U.S. government passed unprecedented tech sanctions against China hoping to contain the country's technological rise and maintain American dominance in artificial intelligence. But the very moment Trump ascended to power, China launched this new AI platform to deliver a clear and unmistakable message to the incoming administration. Not only have we survived your sanctions, we've thrived under them. China's new AI software performs just as well as its American counterparts. But China accomplished it with half the technology and at a fraction of the cost. Even more remarkable, China is making its new AI tool open source, allowing anyone worldwide to view, modify, distribute, and use this software freely. OpenAI's competitive moat may be rapidly shrinking. If a model like DeepSeek can emerge with competitive performance, minimal cost, and reliance on existing outputs, it signals a dramatically shrinking barrier to entry in AI development, challenging the current dominance of industry leaders like OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, and Meta. Make no mistake. Many Silicon Valley CEOs are genuinely concerned and alarmed about the future. The AI industry was supposed to be dominated by American tech giants like NVIDIA, Google, and Meta. But once again, China has managed to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles and accomplish what many thought impossible. To show you just how remarkable this development truly is, I want to take you back to May 2024, when former Google CEO Eric Schmidt spoke with Bloomberg and confidently proclaimed that the future of AI was firmly under United States control. Schmidt said, In the case of artificial intelligence, we are well ahead, two or three years probably of China, which in my world is an eternity. It was quite a bold statement from the former Google executive, who remains one of the most influential voices in America's AI industry. Fast forward to November, just six months after that video was recorded, and Eric Schmidt completely changed his tune. In a speech at Harvard University, he admitted that Chinese companies Alibaba and Tencent were rapidly closing the AI gap, leaving Schmidt to confess to the audience. I thought the restrictions we placed on chips would keep them back. This is shocking to me. There's a lot to unpack here as we enter a new chapter in U.S.-China relations with Donald Trump's return to the White House. Let's start our analysis by examining this map, which illustrates the U.S. government's latest restrictions on AI chip exports. The United States is explicitly trying to prevent non-Western countries from developing AI technology by granting full access only to America's closest allies labeled in blue on the map. It's an audacious strategy, and notably, the U.S. government has excluded many of its close allies and trading partners from Tier 1 status. Take Mexico and India, for example. Both should be considered close American allies, yet both were assigned Tier 2 status, meaning the U.S. government wants to limit their AI development capabilities as well. The United States is going to upset numerous countries around the world with this policy. And it's deeply ironic, given that the U.S. government has preached the virtues of free trade to the rest of the world for decades. In reality, the U.S. government is primarily interested in maintaining its global hegemony, 
And in situations like this, I'm reminded of that internet meme showing the international community, which turns out to be just the US, Canada, Western Europe, Australia, and a handful of allies. When Donald Trump first launched the trade war with China in 2018, he aimed to accomplish two primary objectives. Number one, reduce the United States trade deficit with China. Number two, limit China's global position in manufacturing. Here we are, seven years later, and the trade war has failed at both objectives. Earlier this month, it was reported that China's trade surplus reached a new record of nearly $1 trillion. Since the beginning of the trade war in 2018, China's trade surplus has done nothing but increase. The Wall Street Journal even published a story just four days before Trump's return to the White House, warning the new administration that China has a $1 trillion head start in any tariff fight. Even the United States' secondary goal of reducing China's global manufacturing dominance has failed spectacularly. According to data from the United Nations, China today accounts for approximately 27% of global industrial production up from 24% in 2018. By 2030, the UN predicts China's share will have risen to 45%. The cold truth is this. Despite all of America's efforts to contain China, Chinese factories are dominating global manufacturing on a scale not experienced by any country since the United States after World War II. Kishore Mahbubani, Singapore's former ambassador to the United Nations, recently issued a cautionary warning to Washington that the U.S. government is heading down a very dangerous path. The whole world will move towards relying on Chinese companies for a whole range of products. If the U.S. tries to decouple from Chinese companies and their global reach, the U.S. is not just decoupling from China, it is decoupling from the rest of the world too. The Unintended Acceleration Donald Trump's trade war has triggered a globalization frenzy among Chinese companies. In many sectors, the majority of these firms are implementing going global strategies that would not have unfolded as rapidly without U.S. tariffs. This chart is particularly revealing. It compares the number of foreign companies operating in China to the number of Chinese companies expanding abroad. Notice how wide the gap has become. While foreign brands in China have decreased in recent years, Chinese brands are aggressively expanding overseas. What we're witnessing in real time is that America's efforts to contain China have actually accelerated China's progress across numerous critical industries. And honestly, there is no better case study than China's advancement in semiconductors and artificial intelligence. How Sanctions Fueled Innovation for many years, China imported hundreds of billions of dollars worth of American microchips. At the time, China was perfectly content being the United States' number one customer. But when the U.S. cut off China's access, all those resources, all that capital, all that engineering talent were redirected into domestic Chinese companies, which are now experiencing greater profitability, expanded capabilities, and increased capacity to invest in research and development. The United States essentially forced Chinese tech companies to accomplish something they didn't urgently need to achieve before. And this is how China was able to develop DeepSeek R1, the new open source AI tool that has every Silicon Valley tech executive worried about the future. The $6 million miracle. The first reason for concern is that China has proven you don't need hundreds of billions of dollars to produce cutting edge AI software. Tech insiders simply cannot believe how China built a rival to OpenAI in less than two months with a budget of only $6 million. Why the difference in price? What am I getting for five and a half million versus a billion? That's the thing. You're basically getting a model that's as good as the frontier models that OpenAI and Meta have created. I cannot stress enough how significant this is for the future of America's tech industry. This internal blog post from the AI team at Meta has gone viral, and it exposes a massive problem for Mark Zuckerberg and other Silicon Valley executives. Engineers are moving frantically to dissect DeepSeek and copy anything and everything we can from it. I'm not even exaggerating. Management is worried about justifying the massive cost of our generative AI organization.
How would they face leadership when every single leader of our Gene AI org is making more than what it cost to train DeepSeek V3 entirely? And we have dozens of such leaders. Never underestimate Chinese innovation. After living in China for over a decade, I've come to realize that finding solutions to extraordinarily complex problems is embedded in Chinese culture. One should never bet against China's ability to innovate. Ten years ago, Harvard Business Review was publishing articles claiming China had no capacity for genuine innovation. But fast forward to today, and we now have some of America's most prominent tech investors, like billionaire Mark Andreessen, who helped build the world's first web browser, stating that DeepSeek R1 is one of the most amazing and impressive breakthroughs I've ever seen, and is open source, a profound gift to the world. China has officially caught up. To be honest, this story goes much deeper than a breakthrough in AI development. The world is now waking up to the reality that China has officially caught up, and in some areas is overtaking the U.S. in technology and innovation, despite America's best efforts to stop China's rise. From Stanford to MIT, China's DeepSeek R1 has become the model of choice for America's top university researchers practically overnight. And it's quite easy to see why. Independent third-party testing has shown that China's DeepSeek R1 is nearly identical in quality to the United States' OpenAI, as shown in comparative performance graphs. But what's most impressive is the price point. DeepSeek R1's output cost is literally 30 times cheaper than OpenAI. Once again, I want to share insights from famous tech billionaire Mark Andreessen, who stated, this week may have been the most important week of the decade for two totally different reasons. Andreessen is certainly referring to the re-election of Donald Trump and China's new AI development. It's quite a bold statement to claim both events will define this decade. But in many ways, it's undeniably true. As we've demonstrated in today's analysis, DeepSeek R1 has turned the entire tech industry upside down overnight. What comes next? With Donald Trump's return to the White House, there will be enormous uncertainty regarding the future of geopolitics and world trade. Will Donald Trump double down on his efforts to contain China, or will he seek to work with China and pursue mutually beneficial outcomes? I certainly hope the U.S. and China can find ways to cooperate, because as this MIT Technology Review article states, there can be no winners in a U.S.-China AI arms race. Interestingly, almost half of all top AI researchers globally, some 47%, were either born or educated in China, according to industry studies. This means that if the United States wants to shape the future of artificial intelligence, it's going to have to do so by working with the Chinese, not against them. The lesson here is clear. DeepSeek R1 is more than a technological achievement. It's a stark reminder that sanctions, restrictions, and attempts to contain innovation rarely work as intended. Instead of slowing China down, U.S. export controls accelerated Chinese self-reliance and innovation. Instead of preserving American dominance, they created a parallel AI ecosystem that may prove more cost-effective, more accessible, and ultimately more influential than what Silicon Valley has built. The question now isn't whether China can compete in artificial intelligence. The question is whether the United States can maintain its lead when a competitor has just demonstrated they can achieve comparable results at a fraction of the cost. This is the new reality, and it's unfolding faster than almost anyone predicted. If you value sharp, fact-based analysis of technology, geopolitics, and the future of global innovation, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because the AI race is accelerating and what happens next will define the technological landscape for decades to come.